Signing up for Hell's Kitchen is no joke. And the way even the toughest chefs have been brought to tears over the years is proof enough. But while the contestants are being tested to see if they're head chef material in front of the cameras, there are plenty of rules they have to follow behind the scenes. I mean, they've got to cut all ties from the outside world, including their families, for the entire season. I mean, not even Ramsay breaks that rule. You guys know I never come into these dorms. I give you your peace and respect that privacy. Understood? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Not surprising why some of them end up behaving a little, uh, stir-crazy at times. <laughs> I start drinking and I start doing <laughs> Oh, whoops, sorry, wrong example. I mean, I don't think disconnecting from the outside world mattered to Raj in any way. The dude was just being himself day in and day out. And to be honest, I love him for that. But it definitely took a toll on most, uh, well, normal contestants, just like her. Oh my, oh my god, please. <laughs> How exciting. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Considering the situation she was in, that reaction is more than fair. Being away from your family for five whole weeks in any situation is pretty stressful, let alone in a place like Hell's Kitchen. Getting reunited like that is gonna be super emotional, no matter how you slice it. Now, in Ramsey's own words, this is how he sees Hell's Kitchen. Very exciting, um, live, difficult, tough, sweaty, emotional environment. Yeah, I couldn't have summed it up better myself. But let's dig into the hard, difficult, tough, sweaty part of the show. You know how long they're up and at them every day? How about 12 to 16 hours of being on their feet? And at the end of the day, they still need to cook for themselves. If that's not sweaty, I don't know what is. And their sleep schedule also gets taken pretty off course, with most contestants going to bed around 2 a.m. and waking up at 7 a.m. to start back up their 12 to 16 hour workday. That is the bare minimum amount of sleep to tackle such physically and mentally demanding work. But they'll be using old-fashioned alarm clocks to wake up. You can't even walk into the building without dropping your tech at the door and switching over to analog dials. Yeah, it's hard to sneak in anything, because when it comes to security, nobody does it better than Hell's Kitchen. They honestly make the TSA look like a bunch of kids playing dress-up. I mean, you remember what happened with Trenton and Megan, right? Whose is this? Who smokes? I have no idea, Chef. I have no idea, I want an chef. answer now. Yeah, even something as small as a prank had both finalists coming close to shitting bricks. I'm like about to cry, <laughs> Chef. I was like, don't shut us down. And don't forget, the further you go into the competition, the tougher the going gets. And Ramsey isn't going to go easy on anyone, especially with his standards getting higher and higher as the weed is separated from the chow. And the better you become, then the more I'll put you under pressure. And for those wondering why Ramsey is always so rude with his criticism, he set the record straight. I don't hate these guys. I spend more time with these guys than I do with my family. According to Ramsey, it all comes down to the point of the show. Nobody can become a head chef with just book smarts alone. It comes through experience, heartache, and, of course, pressure. Pressure's healthy, and pressure creates perfection. Ramsey does his damnedest to make sure everybody feels the heat before they can even think about winning the competition. And sometimes, he can figure out who's gonna go far 60 seconds in. Simple setup, a very glamorous, multi-million dollar restaurant. Which is why this signature dish challenge is far from just an opening act, but the most important episode to make an impression. But I've talked about so many signature stinkers since I started my channel, so safe to say not everybody got the memo. That aside, you can't even expect the best and brightest to succeed if they're always getting beaten down. Whether during a challenge or a service, anybody would crack under the pressure. So it's no wonder they go all out with the rewards. You'll be having the most amazing lunch at the beautiful Four Seasons in Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah, if that isn't able to bring you out of a funk, nothing will. But now, let's get into the real juicy stuff. Oh yeah. This was just the beginning. 
Like for one, it's crucial to memorize the entire menu. And in season four, episode two, Petroza figured that out firsthand when he was going through a rough patch during dinner prep. When Ramsey dropped a pop quiz on his head, he just couldn't deliver. The, um, the, um. So it was time for the guy to hit the books until he had it memorized down to the last detail. Do me a favor, get out. Because when it comes to Ramsey, anything less is unacceptable. To know the menu inside out, eat, drink, sleep, breathe it. Meanwhile, Petroza was grumbling about it back in the dorms, considering it had been 19 years since he had to memorize somebody else's menu. During this period, it was it's really bothering me. Once he returned to the kitchen, Ramsey wasn't done schooling him. He dragged him into the pantry for round two. You're now on the verge of making me look stupid now, do you understand? From the desserts, up, what are they? Now, this is where Petroza's memory was really put to the test. He was faced with the same task, but he still ran into a few mistakes. Remember when I said anything less isn't good enough? Okay. Upstairs and start again. Okay. Quick, let's go. Okay. Petroza was feeling overwhelmed and frustrated. So much so that he was wondering if Hell's Kitchen was even the right place for him anymore. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. However, just in the nick of time, Bobby set him straight. He offered him support and reminded him of the passion that brought him to HK in the first place. Come on, come on, put it down. No, I'm Chef done, Wachi, Chef Wachi, he's right out there. And I mean, huge props to Bobby. That's still got to be one of the most selfless moments to have ever happened on the show. Anyway, Bobby helped Petroza reflect on his performance, and that was all he needed to get his head in the game. And get back in the game he did. After a quick celebratory high five with Ramsey. Now, get in the fucking kitchen. Petroza got back to work. Okay. Now that we got the menu out of the way, it turns out what you use to cook these menu items is equally important. Some tools are more appropriate than others in Hell's Kitchen, but unfortunately, this contestant right here didn't get the memo. The day we need that to cook a breast of chicken, get out! See, it's simple. If you can't judge the cook of the meat by look and feel alone, you're not head chef material, full stop. But at least Barbie's mistake was made out of ignorance. And speaking of Barbie, on day five, she was holding down the appetizer station with Christina Wilson. Despite their excitement for the Mexican night theme, it wasn't long before they ran into trouble. Barbie ended up sending out a batch of mussels that tasted like they had never even been in the ocean in the first place, alongside another batch that was actually seasoned. Apparently, the I in Barbie stands for inconsistency. I once totally abandoned and abused. Even the color's different. Bland, delicious, unbelievable. Although Christina offered to jump in and help, Barbie wanted to fix her mistakes on her own terms. You got it, it's right here, I got it. I had some trouble starting off, but I'm gonna fight back. I can do this. And what do you know, she actually managed to pull it off and get the appetizers out in time. But when it was time to serve up the main courses, Dana and Kimmy ended up breaking another important rule. Fish and meat on the same tray. Meat dripping into the fish, fish dripping into the meat. Fish and meat on the same plate. Yeah, I don't think Surf and Turf was on the menu that night. Now, Ramsey was waiting for one of them to step up and take responsibility, but neither seemed too terribly interested in that responsibility at first. Was it a ghost? Somebody tell me what is happening, you fucking idiots. I did, Chef. Eventually though, Kimmy owned up to it. And just when you thought they were on the right track, Danielle ended up breaking another rule. One that's uh, maybe a little more obvious than the surf and turf ban. Yeah, Danielle's raw meat was the catalyst for a complete reset in the reg kitchen. But getting a clean slate apparently didn't do much to clean up her act, since the raw stuff kept coming. Raw pork again, pink and bloody in the middle. I give up. The red team was falling apart, and Barbie wanted to bounce back no matter what it took to make it happen. She wasn't about to serve Ramsay anything raw. 
in a last-ditch effort to salvage the mess, that fateful tool we talked about earlier made its grand debut. I thermometer. Yeah, so here's where a big difference between home cooking and professional cooking rears its head. For personal use, thermometers are great, but they puncture the meat and can dry it out if it didn't have a chance to rest properly. And unfortunately for Barbie, she was caught red-handed by Ramsey himself. The day we need that to cook a breast of chicken. Get out! Not a good look. During the deliberations, she decided to nominate herself. She knew she wasn't the weakest link on the team, but she knew she had messed up. And fortunately for her, Ramsey decided to give her another chance. Barbie may have broken a rule, but her decision to nominate herself was the responsible thing to do. And real ballsy at the same time. Two virtues which Ramsey holds in very high regard. And well, that's how she survived to cook another day. But I don't think she'll ever forget what happened anytime soon. Speaking of, remember when Andrew tried to take some shortcuts to expedite things and sous chef Scott caught him? Hey, get the fuck back in there. You think I'm fucking stupid? I'm not stupid like you. Okay, here's a little lesson for the ignorant few of you from the man himself. Sue chef is, is the second in command or, or the person that oversees everything for the chef. Yeah, it's in the name. They're the head chef's right-hand man, and it's on them to make sure things come out looking perfect. Now, imagine having the audacity to mess with one of them. That's exactly what happened in season 12. When things got crazy between sous chef Andy, one of my favorites, by the way, and a seriously disrespectful chef. So what happened is, sometime during service, Anton found himself in a bit of a pickle after completely ruining his Wellingtons. And sous chef Andy got dragged right into the middle of his mess. But Anton was in no mood to own up to his mistakes. So he started slinging Ramsey's favorite thing. Excuses, excuses, and more excuses. Now, call me crazy, but that doesn't exactly scream maturity, does it? I mean, come on, Anton, everyone expected better from you. But did you catch the look on Andy's face? She was so not having it. But Anton apparently couldn't help but pour more fuel on the fire. Andy was teetering on the edge of her patience. But when push came to shove, she didn't just lose it. Oh no, Anton ended up being on the receiving end of a lot of pent up frustration. Like, tell me you could stand up to this roar and not completely wither. Yeah, didn't think so. Thankfully, Anton ended up getting the boot that same day. He paid the price for his disrespect. Let that serve as a reminder to never, ever mess with a sous chef. Because, I mean, it's not easy to handle a whole brigade. And that explains why most of them are pretty hot-headed. But, coming back to Anton, remember those excuses he bandied out? Well, those are small potatoes compared to Ramsey's mortal enemy. Lies! And what better way to put deception center stage than what happened in season 20, episode 3? If you know, you know. But if you don't, get ready. So, Alex Lennox was manning the meat station alongside Antonio. But soon enough, Kevin ended up making a rookie mistake. And let me tell you, Ramsey wasn't impressed. The miscommunication had him seeing red, and things had barely even gotten started. But get started they did. A little later, Alex found himself face to face with a massive issue with the garnishes that Jay was responsible for. One that threatened to completely derail the meat station. In spite of imminent doom being on the horizon, Alex managed to get his New York strip approved. And he rode that confidence into trying to tackle the chicken solo. Any guesses how that played out? Yeah, no wonder it was raw. But once the refires got going, Alex was desperate for a second opinion on the chicken. This is when Trenton suggested cooking it for another nine minutes. But Alex was more concerned with quantity then quality. Finally, the entrees made their way to Ramsey, and history went and repeated itself. I mean, it was so pink that Curtis Stone noticed it from across the room, and Marino threw in a quip about how he could cook a better chicken himself to boot. And that was the final straw. 
Ramsey wasn't gonna take the embarrassment they served him lying down. So, the men got the boot from the kitchen, and nominations came knocking for two of them. Alex reminded everyone about how he tried to get a second opinion on the chicken, but Trenton didn't think it was enough to let him off the hook completely. Alex immediately deflected the blame to Jay but also threw all the other stations that face communication problems under the bus too. But surprisingly, Jay owned up to his mistake, although he refused to be the only one that'd go down due to the raw chicken. But the rest of the chefs saw the opportunity for what it was and decided to throw him under the bus and Alex while they were at it. So Alex found himself as the blue team's first nominee and Jay wasn't far behind. Ramsey wasted no time digging into the meat of the matter, but Jay stood his ground, blaming Alex and his station for the communication breakdown. However, Alex wasn't about to let Jay's accusations slide. He was determined to set the record straight. Alex argued that the real issues stopped and started with the chicken orders. He insisted that he could cook chicken, but at this point, Ramsey wasn't buying it. And then Ramsey revealed the trick he'd had up his sleeve. Like, where did Antonio even come from? I've literally mentioned him, like, once up to this point. Well, either way, Ramsey was blaming him for the chicken fiasco. But Antonio denied involvement outright. But wait, it gets crazier. Alex completely changed his tune, deciding to point the finger at Trenton. And of course, Trenton denied ever even saying a word about the chicken. With the entire room devolving into a chaotic shouting match, Ramsey had to take a brief recess in his office to clear his head before getting back into it. The four nominees were left squabbling over who did what, while the women on the sidelines were… well, they were there too. Alex was on a mission to blame literally anyone but himself, picking up right where he'd left off with Sam. But finally, after a whole lot of back and forth, Alex came clean. With the spotlight now on Sam, he defended himself by stating that he didn't actually touch the chicken but merely pulled it out for Alex. But when everything was said and done, Ramsey completely took the chicken out of the equation, and Jay's inability to deliver on the garnishes ultimately sealed his fate. Talk about coming out of left field. Well, let me give you a second to get your head on straight. If you're anything like me, your head's gotta be spinning from the twists and turns that elimination took. Okay, here comes another rarely spoken of rule, needing to actually go through with the punishment. Yeah, if you're a huge fan of the show, I'm sure you can already see where I'm headed with this. Well, after a brutal loss in the ostrich meat challenge, the blue team found themselves facing a punishment that involved handling raw pine nuts and dealing with the goo and eggshells in the dining room. But here's where things took a turn for the worse. Matt decided he was too good for the dirty job. He started whining about the judges not getting his culinary genius. I can wait inside of the kitchen. I don't want to sit here and listen to these guys degrading me and talking Oh my god. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that, dude. While the rest of the team rolled up their sleeves and got to work, Matt was nowhere to be found. Instead of lending a hand, he was back in the dorms chilling out while his team was sweating it out. When Aaron finally called him out over it, Matt practically exploded with rage. Instead of owning up to his responsibilities like, you know, a decent person, he decided to throw in the towel and quit the competition altogether. I don't give a but Ramsey wasn't about to let Matt off the hook that easily. He called him over for a quick chat, and let me tell you, things got real. Matt started arguing that the competition itself was unfair, but Ramsey quickly put him in his place. He made it crystal clear that the judges' decisions were final, and if Matt didn't want to play by the rules, he was more than welcome to pack his bags and leave. But then, all of a sudden, Matt suddenly had a change of heart. He decided he wasn't going to quit after all. So, like, why throw the fit in the first place? Honestly, guys, it's anyone's guess. It seemed to me like Matt had literally zero respect for the competition and didn't really have it in him to keep going. So what was the point in trying to fight to keep the guy on the show, Ramsey? 
Well, whatever. I'm sure the pressure in Hell's Kitchen can drive anyone up the wall. But at the end of the day, the whole point of the show is seeing who can rise above that pressure and prove to the world they have what it takes to lead. Got any other rules to add to the list? Get in the comments if I missed something obvious. If you make a big enough fool out of me, I'll get this, own up to it by featuring it in a future video. Yeah, imagine if Alex was as humble as I am. <laughs> anyway, drop by my social media pages to keep up to date with the latest stuff I'm working on. And don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications while you're at it to keep the good stuff coming. And hey, if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see this next one. It's even crazier.